Hello, I am Furkan Özdemir. Hello, I am Ermerkin Doğan. Hello, I am Ömer Faruk Şişman. Today we will be presenting our project which focuses on the benchmarking of Alzheimer's disease neuroimaging initiative as known as ETNI dataset. The ETNI dataset is a widely used resource in the field of Alzheimer's disease research. It contains a vast amount of imaging and clinical data, including MRI scans, cognitive tests, and demographic information. This dataset is a valuable tool for researchers as it allows for the study of the progression of Alzheimer's disease from early detection to monitoring the disease progression. The ETNI dataset is a multi-center study that began in 2004 and has been ongoing since. It is designed to be a long-time study, meaning that it follows the same group of individuals over an extended period of time. This allows for the study of the progression of the disease and the effects of different treatments. The ETNI dataset includes data from over 2,000 individuals, including both healthy controls and individuals with Alzheimer's disease or mild cognitive impairment. In this project, we have used the ETNI dataset as our primary resource. We have used various machine learning models to analyze the data, and our aim was to identify early signs of Alzheimer's disease, as well as to monitor the progression of the disease. We will be also evaluating the performance of these models and drawing conclusions about which ones are the most effective. In this project, we will be sharing our findings and results as well as discussing the implications of our research for the field of Alzheimer's disease research. We hope that this project will provide a deeper understanding of the use of machine learning models and in the analysis of the ethnic data set and the potential of this data set for the future of Alzheimer's disease research. Now, Arkin will talk about the models we have used for classification of brain MRI images. Uh, we have created four different models for classifying a MRI image between mild cognitive impairment and Alzheimer's disease. These models all included CNN layers with convolution RNN and 2D CNN plus RNN combination, utilizing extra RNN layers to increase the low accuracy obtained in 2D CNN model. From these models, the best was 2D CNN and RNN combination with highest accuracy of 84%. The images used were composed of three dimensions of width, height, and depth compared to width and height dimensions of a normal 2D image. To be able to use this image with 2D models, we have taken the central part of depth dimension as our input for 2D CNN and 2D CNN plus RNN models. For 3D CNN and convolution recurrent neural network models, 3D inputs were used. The used input images were applied various image processing steps skull stripping, and brain reorientation. These, the images were, were also resized to a lower resolution of 96 to 96 and comprised of 30 continuous slices from the central part of the image. Now, now Furkan will talk about cognitive tests. For cognitive test score classification, we used scores of the tests like MMSC and ADAS. In addition to these tests, we also used the personal information of the patients like gender, age, and marriage status. With this data, we developed four different models. First one is random first. As you can see in the poster, it gives the highest accuracy after feed-forward neural networks. The second one is the support vector machines. This model gives 72% test accuracy. Third one is Gaussian naive bias. This method gives the least accuracy. And lastly, we developed a feed-forward neural network, which gives 80% test accuracy. In addition to these models, for future work, we are planning to combine text data and the MRI image data that Arkin mentions to detect the correlation and increase the model accuracy. This is the end of our presentation. Thank you for listening.